God, we thank you for another preaching moment. We ask, oh God, as we embark upon this preaching moment and embrace this pulpit, God, we need you with us. Use us tonight, Lord. Stir the guilt in our servant. Send a word tonight, God. Somebody need a word, Lord. Somebody need to hear from you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, touch my body. Lord, my lip, my tongue, my heart, my entire body. In the name of Jesus, allow me to preach nothing but the truth. So help me, God. We know you will and we know you can, God. Allow me to preach with clarity and simplicity. In the name of Jesus, send the sun and bridges down the highway now. You stand up tonight, God. In the name of Jesus. You finish using this vessel, Lord. Yeah. Now I need to take my seat. Yeah. And you continue to be lifted up. Yeah. And we'll give you all the praise and all of the honor. Yeah. For us in Jesus' name yeah. we pray. Let my heart say amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. One more time. Come on, give him another hand of praise. Give yeah. me praise. Yeah. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father. So that we preach it in that name. That miraculous, majestic, magnificent name, that at that name every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So we come on tonight as illustrious esteemed pastor, my friend, my brother, and I'm learning through the years you cannot call everybody your friend. And amen. I thank this brother for being a true friend. I praise the Lord for him being an angel of this house. And we give honor to him tonight and also his wife. We're not here, but we give them honor. Come on, let's give them a hand. Amen. 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 So we give honor to the preacher that raised the roster with me. I must say I met Reverend Evans some years ago. Amen. I think I was teaching at Benedict. Amen. College and when I first met him. Amen. And we thank God in some way, somehow, God brought us together. I praise God. Then I know I will end up in Conway, South Carolina. Amen. Amen. But thank God we are here. Amen. So we give him honor tonight. We give honor to his wife, First Lady Evans, and also to Reverend Brigham. Come on, let's give them a hand and thank God for all the churches tonight. Amen. And I thank God, amen, for the office of this church and this and all. I see one of my deacon, Deacon Pete Wilkes. And I thank God and some of the members from Bethlehem. I'm here tonight. Amen. And I tell you, it's good to have the members. And I have my grandson with me. He keeps me on the social media. Amen. I have me places I don't know where I'm not. Amen. I get called everywhere. But I thank God, amen, for him. But I'm glad to have Bethlehem. But the most important person with me tonight is my wife. I want to understand. Amen. That is my wife. Amen. For eight years. Amen. 48 years, we're still looking at each other. Amen. I bless the Lord for that. Amen. And so we thank God tonight. Y'all pray, we'll preach. If you don't pray, we'll preach anyway. I want you to know this is my fourth revival, but God is still good. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. But that's a word from the Lord, and I pray that you pray with me. I solicit your prayers. I don't know what you call it here. Uh, the protocol, but if you would, those who want to stand are able to stand as we give a reverence to the reading of God's holy and divine word. Amen. From the book of Philippians. Amen. And I want to just give forewarn, forewarning that I'm going to preach uh, from the book of Philippians uh, tonight. I'm going to preach from the first chapter. Amen. And on tomorrow night, I'm going to preach from the second chapter. And on Wednesday night, I'm going to preach from the third chapter. Amen. So you pray, it's a lot in this book. Amen. And certainly we thank God. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, and I want to look at one verse. I want to read it in your hearing tonight. Uh, and I thank God for Reverend Evans. Amen. I want y'all to know we have not conversed. I'm just here to preach. Amen. Uh, the 27th verse. Look at the 27th verse. Amen. The 27th verse of the King James <laughs> translation. If you're there, say amen. amen. 
only let your conversation be as it become the gospel of Christ. <laughs> then when I come and see you, I just be absent. I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God's word for God's people. Let the words of my mouth, the man of heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, I strength in our Redeemer. I see something in this text tonight, and I pray, and I always pray that the Lord will give me a word for the house that he sent me to. And I want you to, I want to say to you all tonight in my life, and all that are here, this word is for you because you are in the house tonight. Amen. Amen. Remember that had a commercial out years ago said, this bird is for you. Don't get over on me now. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, this word is for you. Come on, help me tonight. Amen. Amen. And so we thank God and thought about it. I want to just preach with a little thing this week. I, I want to talk about together is better. Uh, together is better. Look at somebody and say, together is better. Now, here, here's another thought if you don't mind. There's another thought for you tonight. Say, yes, we can handle it together. Yes. Amen. Yeah, look at you, we can handle it together. Yes. Amen. Amen. My brothers and my sisters are all Christians are called to serve. Uh, I made Pope uh, George Washington Carver. He says, not the style of clothes one wear, neither the kind of automobile that one drives, not the amount of money that one has in the bank. Yes. That kind. These mean nothing. It is simply service that measures success. The question tonight, uh, how do we get more people to serve? Uh, how do we move people from sitting to serving? Uh, how do we demonstrate a biblical framework of mobilizing people for ministry? Uh, how do we develop a biblical foundation to serve? Uh, my brother and sister, the great writer Rick Warren, in his book The Perfect Driven Life, he said there is a difference between church attendant and church members that are committed. Yeah. Now, we'll pray with me tonight. Yeah. Amen. A, a church member, he talked about the attenders, he called them spectators from the sideline. Yeah. Members get involved in ministry. Yeah. Attenders are consumers. Yeah. Members are contributors. Yeah. Attenders want the benefit of the church without sharing the responsibility. Yeah. They're like a couple who's a, who want to live together without committing a marriage. Yeah. Go ahead and pray. Yeah. 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 My beloved, serving I found yeah, is the heart. That, yet the heartbeat of a Christian life it is the, the heart of the gospel. If we are going to handle this thing together, we must know how to conduct ourselves, amen, rather act in the body of Christ. Amen. God have a witness here tonight. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I, I want to take you through the uh, isolated world of the elder apostle Paul tonight. By writing this text, he's awaiting in a Roman jail, not knowing if his captors would allow him to live or die. He, he, he literally between a rock and a hard place. He's between the twists and between. The season will soon be rendered, my brothers and sisters, that after what Paul would die in prison of old age, uh, if he would be reduced to the mind in his legend period from the final resting place of his execution. But brothers and sisters, Paul is addressing the church at Philippi tonight for the very well known reason. He is communicating with a church that he has far ability for. He, he, uh, he's with a congregation that has been kind to him. Yes. Uh, they have provided power for him. They have provided commodities to him. They have never ceased to pray for their beloved apostle. Yes. Somebody says, y'all pray always. Come. Yes. Paul is writing here tonight, which are writing in the winter months of years, composed with an air of uncertainty. He not, not, not even Paul had best preached and taught and planted churches throughout Asia Matter. Uh, my brothers and sisters had not been given special dispensation of the Holy Spirit to know his future. Do I have a witness tonight? Paul 
Paul is saying is for the church. Even though his life is in pearls, he is concerned about the church. Pastor Dr. Bellamy, I pray to God I wish we had more members concerned about the church. Do I have a witness here? Right? Especially Paul is concerned because especially there are some outside forces trying to come in the church. He began this pericope by saying, whatever happens, when I see you again in the flesh, I meet you in glory. When I raise you again on earth, I shout with you in heaven. When I see you face to face, I'll be face to face in the presence of Jesus. You know what Paul said? If I don't see you again, if I see you again, I want to leave you some word of encouragement. Do I have a witness tonight? Maybe I'm going to show you tonight. But all of us who love the Lord need some encouragement. From time to time, whether you're a preacher, teacher, come on, have a singer, deacon, trustee, musician, usher, nurse, male, female, young or old, and all of us need some encouragement. Do I have a witness here? Not, not, not just some word of encouragement. Not by those that wake up in the morning and read your horoscope and tell you what's going to happen to you. I wish I had a witness in hell. Not, not that kind of encouragement. No, no, no. Not, 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 not that advice you get from Dr. Fever. Help me in here tonight, somebody. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we need some spiritual help for benevolent encouragement. We need it individually and we need it corporately. Paul's letter committed to the nicest of the church body, a cooperative body. But however, brothers and sisters, where there are no individuals, there is no church body. Somebody shout together is better. I'm not here. I know you've been here for a little while, but pray with me. Paul says, no matter what happens, you need to do three things. I promise I'm glad out of here. That will help you as an individual in a church body. Yeah. Because we believe the holy man wrote the Bible inspired by God. Yeah. There's a reason to deduce that. Not only does Paul want to encourage us, the Holy Spirit wants to encourage us. Yeah. So the first thing you might Paul said, whatever, whatever you do, whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner that you are worthy of the gospel. Yeah. Look at somebody say, conduct yourself. Huh? This, this word, this word of encouragement, it seems so elementary. But however, it is important for us to understand. Paul used the Greek word, here, Dr. Bethany, and that Greek word is politoo. He, he talks about it, which is we get our word from politics. In other words, it literally means to act like a citizen. God help me tonight. I don't know why so many of us, we, we can act like Christians in the church. Still do remember them, amen. But, 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 but it seems like something happened with our identity when we leave the house of the Lord. God have a witness there. Paul said, we're going to act like y'all have a Act like we're citizens. Uh, amen. In the kingdom of God, we ought to act like the kingdom people. Uh, my love, the people of Philippi. They, they, they were proud of their Roman citizenship. So Paul had to remind them that uh, the most important thing is to act, in other words, to behave in a manner that's the fitting citizen of the kingdom of God. Do I have a witness in that? Uh, I, heard, I heard one preacher said not too long ago, he said, he's not proud of you. We're not concerned about kingdom, we're concerned about kingdom. You'll catch it when you get home, man. Watching us. Do I have a witness in there? Our life may be the only power that they read. Do I have a witness in there? And so we need to make sure that our conduct has been Holy Ghost. As representatives of God's kingdom, it needs to be in order. Do I have a witness in there? Residents of Philippi understood this concept. Philippi was a Roman colony. And they were familiar with the praise. You heard it. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. We are Christians. Christians should be Christ-like. But well, we should operate that Christ wants us to operate. This is not about your walk, but it's about 
your talk. Do I have a witness? Sadly, some believers talk a good game. But that walk doesn't match up with that talk. They shine on Sunday, cut you out on Monday. But the Bible said on Wednesday, get high on Thursday. Visit the sick on Friday, party hard on Saturday. We literally have an obligation to act like believers. However, Paul didn't limit this just how we act outside, uh, outside the church. But I see something about the brother because some of us don't act well inside. I don't mean no harm here tonight. I'm just preaching what I'm preaching tonight. I'm not talking about something that's talking about. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. So some of us don't act well inside of the church. I don't mean no harm, but it's not right. Be on your cell phone and playing games. And, hey Amen. Pretending you got a Bible going on. Doing church. Walking here late all the time so you can make a grand entry. Make food and leave a mess on the church floor. Come in the door. Too cute to shout. Somebody say you're preaching tonight. Check out the choir stand. Pull a bit for the finest people. Shout, dance, jump, and then don't give a dime to the Lord. I want to have a witness that. Show up. When you want to show up. Do I have a witness that? I let you remember that some of us show up on any other days. Yeah, can't get them to come to any other. I wish I had a witness here. And it can't be too put in life. I'm going to say that. And we ain't. I said we ain't. I know what I said. We ain't seen some of you since last year. God have a witness. It's in, the, it's in the inside of the church. God have a witness here. Sit out on the preacher while he's preaching. Then go home and shop for the bingles. The cowboys, my team. The goats. The ravens. The cats. The giants. The eagles. I hope, come on, somebody. Yeah, to celebrate other preachers, you can't celebrate your own boss. Do I have a witness in that? Literally, it's Paul. Literally, we have to behave the way we're supposed to. We have to only behave in the sanctuary, but we got to learn how to behave outside of this church. There's a story of the day about a preacher that visited this city, needed to get a haircut, went to the barber shop. And uh, went down to the barber shop, and he was stung by the way folk cussed in the barber shop. He was stung by the way uh, they gossip in that barber shop. He was stung, he, he was shocked by a lot of talking that was going on in the barber shop. And they, they didn't know who he was yet. And asked him, uh, Remember, where could I go to a church? Where, where do the church folk hang out? Somebody sitting there in the chair waiting on the half cut said, Well, well, you see that boy that's cussing? That's the preacher. You see that loud talking going on that? That's the deacon. And that one in the corner about half drunk, that's the musician. Yeah, look, we need to ask ourselves. Am I conducting myself in a manner and behavior that will bring glory? Yes, sir. Paul said you need to learn how to conduct yourself. I said, when Paul teaches us another lesson here, he said, whatever happens, stand firm in one spirit. Somebody shot one spirit. And now Paul shifts from a legal term to an athletic term. He said, you need to stand firm in one spirit. Uh, the problem in many churches is that they got people all over the place, but they are not in one spirit. Lord, I feel that preaching tonight. As Christians, we need to be sure that we don't have selfish ambitions. Never uh, be motivated by doing your own thing. God has a witness in that. I, I don't focus on the life. Must uh, be on our own, not on our own selfish interests. 
but on the entrance of the kingdom of God. Do I have a witness in here? Paul says, you ought to be in one spirit. Spiritual. I thank God. Like I said, I haven't talked to Reverend Evans, but thank God for the Holy Spirit. Spiritual unity means sharing more than just belonging to the same local congregation. Sharing the same pastor. Spiritual unity is akin to a sports team. We all have to work together. Do I have a witness here? Time out for good players in the church. Sometimes we have that old McDonald's have them. Click, click, tap, click, click, tap. Everybody look. It's time out. I said it's time out for Devils in the choir state. Time out for Lone Rangers in leadership. We need yeah, each other. It's time out for our for personal agendas in the church. Our spiritual unified church has to work together. Love one another. Build up one another. Pray together. Shout together. Cry together. Shout together. Walk together. Live together. Praise together. Study together. Sing together. Worship together. Moan together. We got some unifying to do. God has a witness here. Can we be unified? The answer is yes. Are we really unified? Sadly, the answer is no. Will we ever be unified? I'm going to declare that we can if we want to be. Check this out, my brothers and sisters. Everybody, just move your arm up and down like a tomahawk. Tomahawk. That's unity. Everybody stomp your feet. That's unity. Everybody clap your hands. That's unity. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's unity. Yes. The problem is we choose what we want to do. Yes. But God has some things we need to do to demonstrate unity and some of us don't want to do it. Yes. Uh, when everybody's tired, everybody come to Sunday school, everybody come to church, everybody come to Bible study. Yes. I was preaching the Bible not too long ago and I, I shared with a doctor. But I mean that uh, I, I know churches are familiar uh, uh, with praise teams in their church. Uh, we have one, and, I, I, and those that have them, God bless you. Uh, but I discovered something. There's a difference between praise team and a step team. Y'all mind if I share I'm going to back out in a moment. Yes, sir, because I believe tonight that every church. Needs a step team. Yeah. See, a, a step team, and you can write it down if you want to. The S stands for study. The T, Lord help me, stands for time. The E is evangelizing. And the P is praying. If every church had a study team, I would have a witness here tonight. If every church had a time team, y'all want to hear me? An evangelizing team, had a praying team. Now, brother, that's what I pray for in Bethlehem. I love the praise team, but God knows I'm looking for a step team. Do I have a witness tonight? What I like about a step team? A step team. They don't need any music. Y'all want to help me? A step team got to have a keyboard. Do I have a witness? They got to have the mic. Y'all want to preach tonight? Yeah, a step team. I'm talking about a, 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 a step team. They don't need just a, a, a one solo. They, 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 they don't, they, 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 the step team, I'm going to say, everybody on the team yeah. is important. Do yeah. I have a witness here? Yeah. So uh, we, we, we're going to do things that are loud but not unifying. Yeah. Yeah. We need to come together as a team. Yeah. 
The devil is killing some of us tonight by divide and conquer. We need to come together. Do I have a witness here? I said we need to come together before we come apart. Lastly, before I know it's getting late and children that goes through. Paul says, whatever happened, act like a man that's contending for the faith. In other words, Paul said, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Uh, again, this is a sports metaphor. Expand by saying that we should have a common objective. That is, we all should be contending for the faith. In the Greek, this word contending can be suggested it's a joint effort. It's not something for glory hounds. Y'all know about glory hounds. Instead of giving God the glory. They want the glory, Lord heaven and earth. Them chaps. No, 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 no. This, this joint effort is not about long range. You know, everybody needs somebody. Do I have a witness here? I got some old schools in here. Yeah, you know, Batman had who? Right. Y'all gonna play with me tonight? Long range had, come on. Y'all gonna play with me tonight? Yeah, the Sasha. Starts in the hooks. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And then there was another one called Diane. What was it? Diane Ross. And y'all don't get a hold on me. Y'all got a hold on me. Diane Ross in the Supreme. Yeah. All of us need somebody. Yeah. One of the greatest tricks of the devil All right. is to come to in the behind us. Right. Yeah. My spirit tell me tonight yeah. we don't have time to fight each other. We picked the most ridiculous spots yes. in the world right here in the church. Right. Yes. Baptist versus Methodist. Yes. Cody versus Apostolic. Yes. Pentecostal versus Conservatives. Yes. Young versus the old. Yes. Black versus white. Yes. Brown versus yellow. Yes. Old members versus new members. Yes. Loud folk versus quiet folks. Rich people versus poor people. Excuse me, church. Pastors versus deacons. We need to pull together because we have a common enemy to fight. And that enemy, yeah, Lord, is the devil. We cannot impact the devil when we are divided. We cannot be affected uh, when we are divided. We can reach out when we are divided. I'm getting ready to close here. Uh, and I've been preaching here for the last 40 plus years. <clears throat> I'm preaching good times, uh, yeah, Lord, and bad times. I'm preaching sickness, uh, yeah, and in hell. Uh, me and Sister Bridges uh, can have an argument and I, I can still preach. Uh, yes, sir. We, we can disagree about this and that, and I can still preach. But I want to be effective. Me and Sister Bridges uh, got to come on one call. Lord, we all, uh, yes, sir, have a devil to fight. God will win this hell. On one accord. I'm so glad tonight uh, you can wear the same color and not be on one accord. Sit in the choir, sing the same song, and not be on one accord. Sit in the pool, preach the same word, and not be on one accord. But I'm glad tonight uh, when a child of God comes to the Lord. Yeah. <laughs>
got up. We knew you'd get up. Because him and the father were together. I wish I had a witness to that. Say him and the father were together. I knew they were together, baby. Because I heard him say, I got all power. Yes, sir. 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 Y